wonderful day and another opportunity to sharpen your acumen in business. My name is Zawadim Dibo. Welcome to Business Foresight. Now, our theme feature this week, the entrepreneurial feature, we will be looking at hydroponics. What is hydroponics? How does it work? And what can you learn as far as agribusiness is concerned? And we will also be moving on to the entrepreneurial segment or the expert corner. And WTV's Winnie Otieno will be speaking to an expert that will help guide you through this kind of farming. Don't you go far. Hello and welcome to this segment of our interview on Business Foresight. My name is Zawadi Mdibo. Now I introduce to you a kind of farming that is unique, one of its kind. This is called hydroponics. Now hydroponics is the farming where you do not involve soil. And our guest today, our entrepreneur of the day, is Peter Chege. Peter Chege will be talking to us about hydroponics. Come with me. In the outskirts of the central business district of Nairobi lies a little known village geographically located within the county of Kiambu. In the interior of Kikuyu constituency is Zambezi village in a relatively quiet and serene environment. Here lies a small farm, hardly an eighth of a quarter of an acre in size. This farm owned by an agripreneur, Peter Chege, known for his efforts in transforming how farming is done in Kenya. He took up a little known concept he believed would be a game changer, his vision at the time to transform lives through farming. Hydroponics basically means growing plants in water. The plants are placed in growing media such as rock wool, clay pellets, foam, recycled foam, gravel, sawdust or coconut fiber, then feed a nutrient solution to make them grow. Peter Chege explains the process of preparing his most evident crop fodder. Hydroponics means growing plants without soil by use of hydroponics nutrients in water. Hydro, by the, the word hydroponics, hydro means water, hydroponics means work. So it's working in the water. Crops does not consume soil, it consumes nutrients which are in the soil. So soil is just a media. So instead of soil, use water as a media or inert media like cocopite or palm is as a media. By doing so, we will be able to supply the actual amount of water nutrients that the plants requires because say, if you remove water you can use a tray and then you plant your crops there you will be able to supply the actual amount of water the nutrients and the, the excess water goes to the reserve and then you can be able to recycle that water so basically also it uses one tenth of water normally used in agriculture and also it uses a quarter of land normally used in agriculture because you can do vertical farming as use so, so what you are doing because you don't use it soil mm -hmm. with him is john Ngede, a subsistence farmer now turned entrepreneur he describes himself as an ambassador of change. Uh, in hydroponics, we use 80% less water than the conventional way of farming. And then we use a third of the space used on the outside. For example, for if I have got one cow, I require one, one acre of land. Yeah? But in hydroponics, I need uh, for me to feed 10 cows. I require a structure of 4 meters by 3 meters length, uh, width by 3 meters height. The farm is a fully operational hydroponics demonstration and training center producing nutritious hydroponics fodder for cattle, pigs, fish and poultry. It doesn't stop there. The farm produces hydroponics vegetables such as cucumber, sukuma wiki and tomato just mentioned by a few for the local market. He trains and sets up simplified and commercialized hydroponic fodder and food crop systems. The farm also supplies patented hydroponics nutrients, supply of hydrochemically treated trays for growing fodder, and the supply of both variety barley seed for hydroponics fodder. To produce this fodder, a farmer needs hydroponic system which is temperature and humidity controlled and chemically treated trays to prevent fungus growth and infestation. Barley seed is the best for use as fodder due to its very high fermentable sugar and protein content. A variety of other 
harvest seeds can be used. But barley is most nutritious and economical. Germinating barley seed using hydroponic nutrients increases the available protein in the food from 1 to 25 percent protein at the seventh day germination stage. If one does not use correct nutrients, there will be no difference in terms of nutritional value of barley grain and fodder. What happens, for example, if I am growing fodder you know, in one, one hectare, it depends with so many factors. First of all, the diseases in the soil will inhibit the growth. Then what about the erratic weather conditions? You see, I might be willing, I might have one that, that, that one acre of radius, but what about when the, the, the weather changes? That means that I'm not sure whether I'll be able to get harvest. But at hydroponics, I am sure of what we call constant food supply. Why? Because first of all, I say that I'm using very little water and I'm, I, I require very little space. Uh, in the conversion of farming, in, in that one liquor, I need people to go to till the land, uh, other people to, to, to transport the same to, to, to the site, and also the, 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 the chef cutter to cut the, the nipia grass into pieces. But for hydroponics, I, I, I require just one person one hour per day to do the to do this type of feeding uh, or farming. Another thing, I am assured of the nutritional value of the fodder. That is the most important. And to entrepreneurs seeking to venture into this business, a shed with dimensions of seven meters by five meters squared can hold over 270 trays and produce an average of 60 kilograms of fodder every day, using only 20 to 30 liters of water per day. This amount of fodder can be used to supplement 17 dairy cows per day or supplement. 152 heads of goats or sheep per day or to fully feed 172 pigs per day if not to feed over 500 birds each day do the math zawadim dibo the entrepreneur Hello and welcome to the Expert Corner. I am Winnie Otieno and this week's expert is Kevin Washira who will be talking to us about the hydroponics. Karibu Kevin, can you please tell us about yourself? Washira Mondi is a learner. He's a learner, just a person who enjoys learning a lot. So there are a lot of things I do but basically the issue that has brought me here is my entrepreneurship ventures, especially in the world of hydroponics. How do you define hydroponics? Hydroponics is basically agriculture without soil. I know it's a, it's, a, it's a big word just describing something very simple. Could you explain to us how hydroponics work? Well, uh, basically, we, as I have told many people in the past, there's something we learned in uh, primary school in which what are the requirements for a seed to germinate? Air, warmth, mm -hmm. and, uh, and water. So that's all basically we do. We usually just provide these three things to the seeds and they will grow. The problem is now that since there's no soil, what is supporting the plants? So we usually build structures, shed structures in which the plants are held in place because there's no soil. So the advantage of this is the same as Wakulima, they keep on being told Lima, Pendua, Mchanga, aerate the soil for your plants to grow better. So when air gets to the roots of plants, they, it's, it's like they're on steroids all of a sudden. They start growing at a phenomenal rate. So what we've done is eliminate the issue of soil completely. Once you take soil from the equation, now the roots have direct access to the air. So what challenges should I expect as an entrepreneur when I'm taking up this project? Some of the challenges was uh, obviously the, the, all, the learning curve. <laughs> the learning curve. The learning curve, you know, it's always flat, then it's, there's a sprout up and then it flattens again. Uh, it took us some time. We did a lot of mistakes, even in the construction, even in our design. We had to change a lot of things and we lost a bit of, of money because you've already spent money building and you, you end up finding out it's wrong. The other thing was uh, obviously financing, getting the funds. So we used to get pesa kidogo kidogo. And we came to realize that money is made the same way it is lost, kidogo kidogo too. So we had to build some discipline when it came to money. So finally, what's your advice to the youth who want to venture into this farming model? Start. Start. 
But that's the only advice I could give them. Well, you heard it from the expert. I am Winnie Otieno. And until next week, goodbye. In our call to action, Richard Branson says a business has to be involving. It has to be fun and it has to exercise your creative instincts. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of business you're into. It could be selling of secondhand clothes, mitumba clothes. It could be selling of groceries, onions. It could be selling of kelps, cabbages, spinach, skumawiki, name them. Provided you put your all into it. Now, that's it on this edition of Business Foresight. And to the regional markets, we look at what is cutting within the East African region. We begin with a look at the Kenyan market where the Micro and Small Enterprises Authority launches a strategic plan to be a guiding principle of operations for the agency between the year 2013 and 2017. It will focus on growing sectors such as trade, the service industry, manufacturing and agribusiness. It takes into cognizance the important role played by the micro and small enterprises in Kenya's socio-economic development and provide one of the most significant sources of employment, income generation and poverty alleviation. And across our borders to Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia has told Chinese telecoms firm ZTE Corp it risks losing part of its deal worth 800 million US dollars to expand the nation's network because of differences of the cost of upgrading existing systems. The deal last year with monopoly state run operator Ethio Telcom was part of a 1.6 billion US dollar package split between ZTE and another Chinese firm, Huawei Technologies Company Limited. And finally, Corruption among political leaders, crime, unreliable electricity supply and water pollution are the leading causes of concern to Tanzanians. A new study has shown that other issues causing Wananchi sleepless nights are traffic jams, air pollution and poor health according to the 2014 PEW Research Center survey. Well, that does it for this week on Business Foresight. We were talking about agribusiness and particularly hydroponics farming. Now, next week, we will introduce to you rabbit farming. Let's have a sneak preview. There are several reasons why you should keep a rabbit. And this comes in mind when you're starting to keep a rabbit. Do you want to keep a rabbit for meat? Do you want to keep rabbit for uh, for peas, poopoos, or do you want to keep rabbit for the pelt? Maybe you just want you to be skinning and sell the pellet, you have the order, or for the yuri. Well, okay. that and more will be coming to you next week. However, for now, i leave you with a funny clip of the week where we look at some of the business news clips that make business not so serious. This week's theme is on teamwork. Let's take a look. Until next week. I'm Zawadi Mudibo. Bye-bye. It's smarter to travel in groups. Hit!